they still on that way though. But, uh, okay. Well, uh, first of all, welcome. I'm glad you all here. Pray that that we can uh, get something out of it. I don't think you should ever get in the presence of the Word of God and not leave yes, with more than just hearing something, but actually having something that you can utilize. So I'm gonna pray. We're gonna get right into this lesson. So Father, I thank you in advance that your word is what changes lives and I speak your word and become your inner calm. I thank you to speak through me. Your people will hear what you have to say to them. The instructions will change their lives forever. And I thank you for every marriage and relationship that's attached to the kingdom, represent according to what you've designed and desire, and that every benefit be received as you purpose it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, one of the first things I want to say about uh, marriages for grown folk uh, is that a lot of times I think because the world has capitalized on so many of the benefits of the kingdom of God seemingly without God and it's a part of it because it seems like it's working while they don't really add them back in. Uh, I think we kind of took it down, you know, the point that God made when he put man and woman together. Because marriage was a God thing. Marriage was never a world thing. And so anything we'll learn uh, that has to do with God, because God is perfect in all his ways, God will make sure you're trained in everything that God gives you. So you're well equipped and you're prepared. And so with the topic of marriage being for grown folk, it gives us the understanding, Proverbs said, and all you're getting, get understanding. That marriage is not for the immature and undeveloped. And so the base of that development is you've got to be developing your soul where relationships start, in your singleness. There are a lot of people who've never been single with themselves and been in a relationship with God that they know themselves who have hooked up with others in the same manner, and you've got two people finding themselves and thinking that's marriage. But marriage is not an experiment. Marriage is something you do with experience. Yes. And so in order for that to occur, you've got to be developed. That means you've got to grow up. Marriage is not something that you get into, and then all of a sudden you get upset about the situation that you're dealing with, and you jump out of it. The Bible says you should not get out of marriage alive. It's a covenant. And that covenant becomes a contract. It's not a business deal, but there's some business that has to be tended to. And it is the business of taking care of the affairs of another individual and of the people in the midst of it. And so if you're not in the business of taking care of someone else, marriage is really not for you. And so that's why when you're single and you're with God, God teaches you how to, relation, have, have, to have a relationship with yourself, that you begin to train up to know yourself so that when you get, someone, get with someone else, you be done with yourself. And there are a lot of people who are still feeling themselves when you should be F-I-L-I-N-G someone else. And so we find a lot of marriage breakups or a lot of people together broken in a marriage relationship. And what that basically means is a lot of times it's the simple fact that they're undeveloped and immature. They haven't grown up. And so what you do is you put two kids in the house playing house just because, you know, you've grown up through the years don't mean you've developed them. And so marriage is full of development. A lot of times, uh, marriage is PG, you know, parental guidance is required. And in this case, you know, the person God is required because a lot of times nobody can take care of another soul without being trained up on how to understand the soul. Can I tell you, God can teach you how to understand each other's soul? And so when you deal with soulmate, this is not something that's a worldly concept. Because in the world, it's just flesh mates. Because a lot of that's lust and desire. Uh, and it's a lot of stuff people buy into, but they don't sell out for. Mm -hmm. And see, when you grow up, responsibility becomes a part of that growth. And so merge is for people who want responsibility. That means you have the ability to respond. This might hurt your feelings a little bit. And that means you're not praying for God to fix anything. You're looking to God to deal with everything. And we do more time praying to God to fix something we got into because we're still not developed enough to know that God is expecting us 
to deal what we got into. Even if it was a stumbling block, it can become a stepping stone if you humble yourself. Yes. You know, so it's grown up. It's something when you spend enough time with yourself and life is about you, and then you get with someone else and now life is about them, you begin to understand the concept through being trained by God in knowing order where you submit yourself. And one of the problems with uh, marriage is we don't understand the word submission. A lot of times submission means do what I tell you to do and do, do what I told you to do on either end. But the truth is submitting means just like if you write something down, this is what I require, this is what makes me tick, this is what makes me happy, this is what makes me yellow, this is what makes me blue, and I submit that to you. Then I write down, this is what makes me happy, and I submit that to you. And now you're responsible for my submission. Just like I'm responsible for your submission, right, but we're right. both responsible to submit. Mm -hmm. Now, when you develop and grow up and you're mature, you got to respond to that with the ability. And the ability came from getting understanding. Now, I know you. And so the first person in that responsibility who's supposed to actually know the other person, according to the kingdom of God, was the husband, who he made the head. So you lead the pack to submit first. And most of the time, men don't want to tell them about what makes us happy and who we are. We figure, we, I got me, let me take care of you. It don't work like that. This is not your, this is not your marriage. You didn't put this marriage together. God put marriage together. You're just enjoying it. You're just the beneficiary of it. Marriage is for God. Kids are for God. All that's the benefit for you. And see, a lot of times the world takes that concept, they bring it into the church, and we take sanctify, a sanctified thing and make it a secular thing and then we do what seems right in the thing, and that's where a lot of times we messed up. And we become undeveloped, immature, and we have the same problems the world has. Here's the problem with the world now in relationship. They're childish. You can tell they're childish. They don't want full responsibility because a lot of them rather do the boyfriend-girlfriend thing. And they like the playhouse. Well, ain't that what your kids do? You got my time? Rod, you got my time? Give, let them know what your time is. So they play house. Well, unfortunately in the kingdom of God, because God is perfect in all his ways, and the Bible says even in Ephesians 4, he's given us some who he's taught the doctrines and lessons and understand the principles of God to perfect the saints. It didn't say perfect the sinners. It said perfect the saints. See, because if we get perfected, our example will perfect them, and they're perfect when they come to God. That's about as good as they can get. And then they become a saint and be perfected. And it's for the work of the ministry. So marriage is a ministry. Marriage right. is a, ministry means service in God. Marriage is a service. You don't get in a marriage to be served. That's what kids do. You serve your children. I got to get you breakfast. I got to wash your clothes. I got to. Well, when you do that to your husband or your wife, you are now serving them. They're not looking to be served. So if you are washing my clothes, I am making sure whatever your other need is being met. I'm making sure if I need to wash your clothes, you can meet my other need. But we're always us-minded. Right. Yeah. Marriage is about dying. When we merged or got married to Christ, do you know there's a development stage? You just didn't get saved and joined with Christ. The Bible says you got to work out your soul salvation. So marriage <laughs> takes some work. A lot of times people get married and they don't want to do the work. Matter of fact, they think we work on it when we get married. No, you work before that. And so one of the things we've got to begin to teach ourselves, if we're single or not, and those that are around us, we've got to begin to teach them to do the work before you get married. You know, you should be one and I should be one, and the two should become whole. I don't need a better half. I need your best. I need your best you. I don't need a half. I want you whole. And the problem, we got two halves, and you know the series, the halves and the half nots. So one of us have a half and the other half not much of anything because we just didn't develop. Some of us come out of dysfunctional places. Yeah. We come out of other relationships that unfortunately had not been trained up. They don't understand. They do the best they can with what they got. Watch this. And then we put it under grace. See? See? I promise you there's no favor in ignorance. What you call it grace is probably mercy. Yes. Yeah. Now, mercy is grace. Yes. Because grace allows you time for God to forgive you, to give you time for some of us to get in a place where he brings us to where we can hear the word of God. Begin to humble ourselves and begin to lean out to our understanding and start acknowledging him in all our ways. We know relationship is a way of life. So we got to acknowledge God in our relationship. 
you know, the scripture says a man that found a wife found him a good thing. So God is not going to find my wife. No, he's not going to find your wife. He's going to locate you and make you the best you, you can be. So when you make the choice, it'll be a God-conscious decision. So at the end of the day, you might have done it, but it was through God's mind. See, that's responsibility. That's work. So you got to work on your mind. You got to work on your soul now. So when you find your soul mate or match, they'll put you in remembrance of what God taught you and trained you and what that person is supposed to be like so that marriage should be like what God has said. I've been married from September 20 years. I've been with her 24 years. That's two decades. It, it was not a walk in the park the whole time. As challenging as it was, I found out the hard part was growing up. Yes. The God part was easy. Submit to the word of God and the things you deal with will be less difficult. I found out arguments can stop when somebody grows up. Kanda, <laughs> Shanda. <laughs> and if the Spirit of God say you lie. The Spirit of God didn't tell you do anything but humble yourself. And us as the men, submit ourselves. Just because you have it all don't mean you know it all. She wouldn't be called wisdom. And just because you wise don't mean you need to say it all. So there's some control, which is called order. That has to come in. As smart and wise as you are with your beautiful, glorious self, everything ain't for you to tell me. Because he made the man for God and the woman for the man. Which means there's some things a man has to go to God or he's going to get the big head. You don't want a big head in the house. Let that man be with God. That's why it's important before we really get together, i got to know God. So that when God wants to talk to me, I won't put that responsibility on you. And you'll become to help me. I may have heard God, but you helped me hear clearer. But we don't have a fight. And who's going to be God? And now see the balances. The oil, I like to say the oil, because wherever balance is in the things of God, there's an oil that's always making them run smooth and keeping stuff from knocking. If you're married to a relationship, even being single is knocking. That's because you ain't got enough oil in the thing. <laughs> How much time I got? <laughs> as soon as it gets good, I got to check my time because I'm coming overflow. I'm already ready. And see, marriage supposed to be this good. I'm telling you, I got to throw this nugget in you. How many of y'all married? You ain't get married or something. Look for, you ain't married yet. You setting yourself up. Good, good, good. It's dessert. Uh, but here's something I discussed. I discovered. You know the worst thing you can do when you're in the marriage? And you enjoy the intimacy that God set up for a husband and a wife, even in your private time in the holy place, is to get upset with each other and deny each other what you enjoy. One of the craziest things we do to show that we're immature in marriage is it's something you enjoy with the person. They did something to make you upset. You singly are the victim and they're the uh, offender, rather. But you do something to cause you more pain. Like, I'm not going out. We plan to go out, but I'm mad at you, so I'm not going out. You lose. They, they're, they're not losing. You should let them atone. Take me out. And the last thing you said to me, take me out and make me better. Even though I should know to go to God, which I did, I ain't telling you. Because I'm, I'm going to let you get forgiveness. I'm going to let you be forgiven. So you want to be forgiven, where are we going? <laughs> I understand in the spirit what it means, but what's in the spirit is parallel and natural. Don't tell me forgive you when you don't give me nothing for that. Uh, Y'all ain't say nothing. I said marriage is for grown folk. It's responsibility. If I do something to hurt her feelings, then I go to God, she goes to God. She's old, she can handle it, but I still got to deal with the outer surface because she feels, which means I got the ability to make her feel better by doing something godly to her. The Bible said he draws us with his goodness. So I got to be good to that girl. And if good means going out or sitting in and watching a series or go to a, what they call a chick flick or whatever, like I did last night, the angry moms or whatever it is, then so be it. But you got to do it and join it. You ain't saying nothing. That. I say you got to do it and join it. Don't be forced to enjoy it too. Because for real, that's what she or he is going to enjoy. You messed up. You've been off the chain, your mouth been running. Sit down and watch this game with me and enjoy it. And get the chips and dip. <laughs> it's grown folk stuff. 
Yeah. It's about yeah. serving. Marriage is about the greatest gift that God has gave man, yeah. and that is to serve one another. But you, watch this. You, unlike any other person, you that emerge are connected unto God. You never fail at serving because you got somebody to serve there all of your life. So that one thing when you get to heaven, you know you got a crown with a gold stone or a diamond in Because I've been in service. If I ain't serving nobody else, I serve somebody. If I ain't witness to nobody else, I witness to somebody. And this whole family that comes along with it. That's why marriage is the greatest thing since Popeye's chicken. Or mama's chicken or whoever if you like chicken. Marriage is phenomenal. When you're an adult. But when you're a child, marriage is difficult because there's a lot of responsibilities and I've grown up to handle that. My time is up. I thank you.